All right, now we're taking a look here at our five day graphical tropical weather outlook. We're just gonna be going over the tropics within this video, going over everything that we have to update you guys on as far as the tropical Atlantic is concerned. Now, over the next five days, like I mentioned, we do not have any expected activity or tropical, ex or tropical cyclones at this point. Uh, but we probably will get more li likely to have some of that going on a little bit later on. So I felt like this is a good time to make this video. Let's just get into the satellite imagery here. And as you can see, we're taking a look at our entire Atlantic. And there's some interesting stuff going on. Uh, first off, up here, uh, where there could be a homegrown system with these types of storms. We don't really expect it this time around. But anytime you see a lot of storminess there in the southeast especially when the jet is quickly moving things out like this. You could see a homegrown system take place. That doesn't look to be the case this time around. There's always that chance that we do get a southern Caribbean storm that gets going as well, uh, but that also does not look to be the case at this point. As we can see, the Gulf of Mexico is a little bit quieter, uh, not a lot of activity hanging out in there. And then we have our main development region in here. Um, we don't have any waves that are currently in this region, but we can see right over Africa, there is a wave uh, that is finally going to enter into that main development region. And that's when we could see this activity really, really start to ramp up at that point. So we need to watch that very closely, this low that is going to move through the main development region. What it does after that is kind of a question mark at this point, and only time we'll really be able to tell. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at some sea surface temperature anomalies. Now here's the entire Atlantic's sea surface temperature anomalies. It's pretty simple. The blues are going to be your below normal sea surface temperatures. And the yellows and oranges and reds are going to be your above normal sea surface temperatures. Obviously we know that tropical cyclones love warm waters. They love to develop over warm waters. And that's why there's big time implications with that. Uh, whenever we have colder temperatures in there, that's when we're looking at probably below normal development. And whenever the, we see the reds and the oranges and the yellows, that's where we expect potentially above normal development. Now we can tell there is a kind of bubble here around uh, Africa where there is just these blues popping up. This tells me that there's going to be a little bit less likely development within these colder waters. It doesn't mean that we will have actually below normal or uh, no, no storms by any means. What that does mean is that we might see a lot try to horseshoe around, or at least if they do horseshoe around like this, they would have an easier time developing than if they were to go through this region, which we do see both of these tracks from time to time. So we're going to see a little bit less of this. We're going to see a little bit more of this, technically. That's at least how it should go on paper. That does not guarantee anything, though. So at this point, it's still very early. These areas seem to be more favorable uh, than these areas in here. Um, so a little bit less in here, a little bit more in here potentially is what we expect to potentially take place as far as the sea surface temperatures are concerned. Now, the one thing is usually you don't have systems down here. Actually, you almost never do. Uh, if anything, they come in like this from that main development region. So they'll still have to go through the blue most likely and even... Uh, if they do this, they could very well curve up like this. We might not ever see any really trying to come this close to the coast. This is a much more rare track, especially getting that close to the northeast where we have those very, very warm waters compared to normal. That is not a common track. That's why we don't have hurricanes hitting Boston every year. You know, that doesn't happen every year. That tells us that's not a very common track. Now, the Gulf of Mexico is ripe, I will tell you guys. Uh, we can see lots of the most potent reds and oranges in there. The Gulf of Mexico, unlike the northeast of the United States, does frequently see tropical systems in the Atlantic hurricane season, and that highly needs to be watched at this point because of just the sheer amount of storms we typically see in there, plus the above normal, more favorable conditions that we have in there at this point. All of these things need to be watched very, very closely as we head into the hurricane season. Now, here's the seven-day change. This shows us how things have changed over the past seven days. We can see that there was some cooling here over uh, kind of the Canada coast there. Uh, we can also see that our main development region, for the most part, cooled. There was some warming that took place here on the southern end, but uh, out, ultimately, we saw more cooling than warming. Then we can see here in the south and towards the eastern United States and even the Gulf of the United States, 
we've seen some cooling in here, but mostly warming, I would say, both for offshore of the East Coast and also for in the Gulf of Mexico. Both of these regions primarily have warmed, not cooled, uh, but that's not to say that they're overall have warmed or overall have cooled over the past seven days. Uh, it's really hard to tell that for sure, uh, unless you're right over a color there individually. So we can tell that, you know, offshore of Tampa Bay there, yes, things have warmed. Uh, offshore of Norfolk, Virginia, yes, things have warmed. Offshore of Cape Cod, things have warmed. Offshore of Newfoundland, things have cooled. We can tell things like that, but talking about an overall region like, like for instance, if I circle this in, it's kind of hard to differentiate if there's more yellow or more blue in there. Um, it's really hard to tell. Now let's go ahead and move on and talk about these charts for the temperature anomalies real quickly. Here's your Nino 3.4 index. You might be wondering, why is this even important? Well, it is important because this affects the trade winds, and the trade winds affect the shear up in the sky. And the shear up in the sky affects if these storms are going to get their heads chopped off or if they're going to be able to just continue to develop because we see those really a lot of those taller clouds when there's high shear situations. You'll look at the satellite imagery and it will clean cut off the top of those clouds. Uh, so that is something that happens more frequently in El Nino's and in La Nina's we see that a lot less frequently. So that's why that is kind of important here. We can see that we were more negative here uh, all the way through the beginning of June. We saw pretty far negative, around a, you know, a degree below normal there, Celsius. Things have warmed up to within a half degree uh, of normal there, Celsius. So technically right now we are in a La Nada. Um, we've been that way for about a month or more. And we need to watch how this progresses because if we see this dip back down, again, that's going to mean more favorable towards tropical development. If we see this continue to rise throughout the hurricane season, and the effects do lag back, so it's going to have to happen quickly. But we might begin to see El Nino develop, and that would mean that we could see, technically, uh, these tropical systems have a little bit of a harder time developing. So that's why all these things are important to talk about. Now here's the Gulf of Mexico real quickly. And we can see that the Gulf of Mexico has been up and down. We can see a lot of, you know, interesting curvature here. But over the past month or so, we've seen a nice warming trend there, and that probably explains why our Gulf of Mexico has been so warm. Uh, we saw there on the temperature anomalies that we currently are in a warmer Gulf of Mexico. Probably has a lot to do with this. It's been warming up over the past two weeks to a month, uh, and that doesn't look to slow down anytime soon, although we can see that looking at the history here, it has been pretty sporadic over the last six months or however long this is. Uh, maybe even just three months, we can see that this has been really all over the place. And just when you think it's about to go really high, it comes back down. It's just like the stock market here, looking at these charts. It's actually a really good analogy. Now let's take a look at the Carib or better yet, the Atlantic MDR or main development region. Again, this is offshore of Africa heading towards the Caribbean. This is again called our main development region. This is where most tropical cyclones actually end up developing or starting out at least. And we can see this has just been a roller coaster ride. This hurricane season, we can see this has been dipping down and rising up, dipping down, rising up, dipping down, rising up, dipping down, and now it looks like it might be rising up. We're right around neutral now. Again, the neutral line is going to be about there. So we're about to tap into that neutral line. And just before the beginning of the peak of hurricane season, we might pop into a positive MDR here, see a warmer main development region overall which would mean a lot of things. It would mean that we're probably going to start to see these storms have an easier time developing in there. But my two cents is that as long as this area is near normal, which basically anywhere on this chart is relatively close to normal temperatures, uh, these storms aren't going to have a hard time developing there necessarily. Uh, it just might not be insanely easy for them to develop in here, if that makes sense. But in the La Nina conditions with the trade winds lower, uh, this might mean that we technically could have much easier time developing here across most, if not all, of the Atlantic here uh, during this hurricane season. So all these things need to be talked about. Uh, let's take a look at the Caribbean real quickly. We can see this one's also been a bit of a roller coaster, trending up here last minute though. We can see up and down, up and down, way down here for the end of May, and then way up. So it kind of recovered really quickly, and then way back down, and then way up, and then it came down a little bit less, uh, and now it's rising again. This looks like a, a, a trend here to me, 
if I was a stock market trader, which I am a little bit of myself here, I would say probably we're going to end up with something similar to what we saw here, uh, probably as a peak here sometime in mid-June. Uh, although this isn't technically a way to predict this, it's just a good guess, I think, based on what we're seeing here. Uh, it's been getting higher with these lows every single time, so I'm guessing we're going to see higher highs uh, with that. Uh, it just seems like it's been a pretty solid trend. I mean, you can see it there on the screen. That looks like a solid trend to me. So we're going to be watching that really closely. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was a good little hurricane season update. I just wanted to update you guys on how these conditions are turning out at this point. Just all the updates on all of these things so far. Uh, we're getting really, really close here as we're going through July. We're going to start to see things probably get active at some point in this month on average. And then definitely, as we all know, by August and September, things will really be going. So we need to watch all of these things very closely. And we're getting awfully close here. So this was a good time to talk about it, like I said. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.